Japan's nuclear regulator is coming under fire from a group of leading experts. They say the body charged with overseeing the aftermath of the accident in Fukushima is too bureaucratic. The Nuclear Regulation Authority fielded comments on Monday from six experts who are studying the crisis in Fukushima. They looked at the NRA's first year of operation. One of the experts is a lawyer who served on a diet panel that investigated the accident. The regulators are acting like bureaucrats. When something goes wrong, they summon TEPCO officials and demand explanations. People must doubt that the regulators are really getting the truth. Another expert said drafting rules and standards isn't enough to win public trust. He urged regulators to take a more proactive stance in dealing with the crisis. Others press for reforms at the NRA Secretariat. It's staffed mostly by personnel from the previous regulator and another body which was under a government umbrella that promoted nuclear power. NRA Chief Shinichi Tanaka said he feels the organization has been given a mandate that's beyond its abilities. But he said NRA members will try their best. TEPCO President Naomi Hirose apologized for the problems at a session of the Fukushima Prefectural Assembly. He said the firm will make wastewater decontamination its top priority. This is the second time that a TEPCO president has attended a session of the assembly since the nuclear accident at the plant in 2011. TEPCO is dealing with the situation and starting to take measures with determination to deploy all of our management resources. Hirose has also pledged that decommissioning the reactors at the plant will proceed without delay. We have announced that we will put aside another $10 billion for this purpose for the next 10 years. He stressed that he will ensure that no necessary measures are canceled or delayed just because the company wants to cut costs or streamline its business. Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant face another challenge. They say that contaminated rainwater has overflowed when they were pumping it into a temporary tank. An official from the Tokyo Electric Power Company says four tons of contaminated rainwater has seeped into the ground. A tropical storm in September created the excess. It has been contained by barriers that surround the storage tanks. TEPCO officials say the rainwater overflowed when workers were pumping it into temporary tanks. The officials say the radiation level of the water just after the storm was 160 becquerels per liter. This is five times higher than the government's safety limit for releasing water into the ocean. Workers are hurrying to analyze contamination levels in the immediate area. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has expressed concern about the way TEPCO has handled the contaminated rainwater. Managers of Japan's Danish nuclear plant have been trying to find out how four tons of radioactive rainwater spilled from a storage tank. They say workers at Fukushima Daiichi may have been pumping it into the wrong container. An official with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company says crews were pumping up pools of contaminated rainwater. A tropical storm passed over the complex last month. Rain built up inside barriers around the tanks used to store contaminated water. The crews may have transferred it into the wrong tank, leading to an overflow. Workers measured the level of radiation inside the tank after the leak. It was 13 times higher than the government safety limit for releasing tainted water into the ocean. For some reason, the level of radiation in the rainwater had doubled since measurements taken just after the storm. Plant managers are looking into what caused the spike. People in Fukushima still have doubts. Government leaders there have decided to do their own test on ocean water near the plant. Officials held an emergency meeting to discuss the problem. They decided to launch an inspection as early as Thursday. They'll test water near a drain that they think may be carrying radioactive water. TEPCO's president recently vowed to make containing wastewater his highest priority. But Fukushima governor, Fukushima's governor, Yuhei Sato, said he's skeptical. And he criticized TEPCO's handling of the leaks. Fukushima officials say they are summoning TEPCO. They are demanding the utility quickly act to keep more contaminated water from seeping from the plant. TEPCO officials have revealed the cause of a leak of radioactive rainwater at Fukushima Daiichi. They're blaming miscommunication with the subcontractor. 
Workers with the subcontractor were mopping up rainwater left behind last month by a tropical storm. The water became tainted after it accumulated inside the barriers around contaminated water storage tanks. The workers pumped it into another tank, but about five tons overflowed and seeped into the ground. TEPCO officials say the workers sent the water to a small tank by mistake. The level of radiation inside the container was 13 times higher than the government's safety limit for releasing tainted water into the ocean. The people in charge of Fukushima Daiichi have figured out the cause of the latest problem. Highly radioactive water leaked from another storage tank at the troubled nuclear plant and some of it may have seeped into the sea. Managers have revealed that crews overfilled a tank that had been built on a slope. Workers found contaminated water leaking from the upper parts of the tank. Officials with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, say it escaped from a joint between the top and side panels. They tested the water and found it contains 200,000 backrolls per litre of radioactive substances. That's much higher than the government safety standard for release into the ocean. TEPCO officials say the tank in question was built on ground that slopes toward the sea. They say workers are usually careful not to fill tanks to the top. But this time, they put it too much rainwater that had pooled nearby and was contaminated. Some of the spilled water may have reached the ocean. We've put down sandbags to try to stop more water from making it to the sea. TEPCO officials estimate that 430 litres of tainted water seeped outside the barrier around the tank. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has halted operation of a system designed to filter radioactive materials from water. It's the second time in a week that the system has been shut down. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company say an alarm went off on Friday morning. It indicated abnormalities in the plant's advanced liquid processing system, or ALPS. The equipment is supposed to eliminate radioactive substances from wastewater stored at the plant. Company officials are trying to find out what set off the alarm. TEPCO officials resumed operation of the Alps on September 27th after a month and a half of suspension, but they shut it down later that day. Company officials say a rubber mat had clogged the drain. They say workers forgot to remove it after inspecting the inside of the tank. The Alps went back online on Monday. The head of Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority had some harsh words for the president of Tokyo Electric Power Company. He's demanding the company move quickly to prevent contaminated water leaks at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The nuclear regulator's top official, Katsuhisa Ikeda, summoned TEPCO president Naomi Hirose to his office on Friday. You're not managing the situation at the nuclear plant properly. I'm really concerned. I'm worried that this kind of leakage may occur again. Keda said he wants TEPCO to send personnel from other power plants to assist with the work at the Fukushima plant. I'm terribly sorry for the mistakes we have made. We mishandled the leaking wastewater, and that is affecting the environment. Hirose said TEPCO had recently changed its system for managing contaminated wastewater and that workers had not yet learned to use it. He said he would employ every possible resource to deal with the problem. TEPCO workers found that they had pumped too much water into a storage tank, causing it to overflow on Wednesday. They said they detected high levels of radioactive substances in the water that spilled out of the tank. The operator of Japan's damaged nuclear plant has apologized after more highly radioactive water leaked at the facility and likely seeped into the sea. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say they failed to correctly estimate how much water a row of storage tanks, storage tanks on a slope could hold. We have to confess that another leak has happened. We are very sorry for this. About 430 litres of highly radioactive water spilled over from the top of a tank. Plant managers say the water contained 200,000 becquerels of beta-ray emitting radioactive materials per litre. The government limit for releasing this type of water into the ocean is 30 becquerels per litre. TEPCO officials say the water likely drained into the Pacific about 200 metres away. 
The tank is situated on a slope and is tilted. Workers usually take this angle into consideration when calculating how much water they can add. But TEPCO officials say too much water was pumped in this time, causing the leak. The tank is the lowest in a row of five tanks along a slope. They're connected with pipes. The water level is higher in the tanks that are closer to the ocean. But only the one on the highest part of the slope had a water gauge. Workers believe that if they kept the tank 98% full, no water would spill out. But they miscalculated. Containing contaminated water is a daily problem at Fukushima Daiichi. Crews need to plug the leaks as they build more tanks to store the tons of contaminated water that's building up every day at the plant. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says it wants to improve procedures to prevent human error. A series of recent incidents have led to a leak of radioactive rainwater and the suspension of a decontamination system. The president of Tokyo Electric Power Company told lawmakers that workers at the plant are overstretched. We need to increase the workforce. We also believe it's very important to improve their working environment. Earlier on Monday, a human error caused a partial power failure at Fukushima Daiichi. TEPCO officials say a worker mistakenly pushed the stop button of a switchboard during an inspection. A pump that injects water to cool nuclear fuel inside Reactor 1 stopped, but a backup pump quickly kicked in. Officials say the reactor's temperatures remained unchanged. The chairman of the Nuclear Regulation Authority says the situation at Fukushima Daiichi could impact TEPCO's bid to restart its largest nuclear reactor. The situation at Fukushima Daiichi has not been sufficiently stabilized to reassure the public about safety. We will proceed very carefully with our safety inspections at Kashiwazaki Kariwa. Tanaka added he ordered TEPCO to submit a report on safety management at Kashiwazaki Kariwa by the end of this week. Officials in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say human error has caused another leak of highly radioactive water. This time, the spill has put workers at risk. The officials say at least six workers were sprayed with contaminated water, exposing them to radiation. Tokyo Electric Power Company says the accident happened near a desalination device. The plant operator says the affected people were among a group of workers who mistakenly detached a water pipe from a joint. This caused contaminated water to spray from the pipe. The water continued leaking for about one hour. Typical officials say toxic water sprayed on six of the 11 workers nearby. It says that left radioactive substances on their skin. The company is now checking the level of exposure. TEPCO says some seven tons of spilled water is contained within the barrier that surrounds the desalination equipment. The water is highly radioactive, containing 34 million becquerels of beta-ray emitting material per litre. Human error has been responsible for a string of recent accidents at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. TEPCO officials say they've identified a likely cause of an earlier leakage of radioactive water. They say parts of a storage tank had corroded. More than 300 tons of contaminated water leaked from a tank in August. TEPCO officials say some of it may have flowed into the Pacific Ocean. Engineers dismantled the tank. They found corrosion around two bolt holes at the bottom of the tank. They believe water leaked out from gaps around the bolts. More than 300 tanks of a similar type store tainted water at the plant. TEPCO officials plan to replace them with welded tanks as soon as possible. Highly radioactive water leaked from another storage tank at the troubled nuclear plant and some of it may have reached the sea. Two leaks on Tuesday and Wednesday both happened as measures were being taken to prevent contaminated water in containment barriers from overflowing during rainstorms. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi has more. Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant found contaminated water leaking from the upper part of a tank on Wednesday night. The plant operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, estimates that 430 liters of wastewater seeped outside the barrier around the tank. 
The water inside the barrier registered 200,000 becquerels per liter of beta ray emitting radioactive substances. The tank is located about 200 meters from the shore. Officials say some contaminated water may have reached the sea. We have to confess that another leak has happened. We are very sorry for this. Workers are moving the water from the barrier to the tank in preparation for a coming typhoon. But the tank is built on a slope, making measurement of its water level unreliable. They then mistakenly transferred too much water. The leak on Tuesday was also related to rain. About five tons of radioactive water leaked from a tank and probably soaked into the ground. Workers tried to move contaminated water in the barrier to a second barrier because rain was filling the first one. But miscommunication resulted in water being moved into a small tank. Repeated mistakes show typical officials don't have the ability to handle the water properly when there is rain. They have to step up measures to prevent further leaks. Che Yamagishi, NHK World, Tokyo. The storm dumped heavy rain on Japan's damaged nuclear plant and the water accumulated around the compound. Some of it became contaminated with radioactive substances. Managers at Fukushima Daiichi instructed workers to release it into the ocean after tests showed the radiation levels met safety standards. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say the rainwater had accumulated inside barriers surrounding tanks that are used to store contaminated water. They say it cleared standards set by the Nuclear Regulation Authority for release into the sea. So they let it flow out of the barriers from nine locations. Workers made an emergency transfer of rainwater that had accumulated at two other locations because they suspected it was highly radioactive. They pumped it into an underground storage pool and will leave it there temporarily. Hundreds of tons of contaminated water builds up every day at Fukushima Daiichi, and crews must store it. Heavy rain creates more work. After a storm earlier this month, plant managers had additional storage tanks built and increased patrols to stop contaminated water from escaping. Tainted rainwater flowed over barriers at the time and seeped out of an overfilled tank. And workers at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant are preparing for the typhoon. They've taken steps to stop leaks of radioactive water. The governor of Fukushima, Yuhei Sato, visited the plant. He urged the Tokyo Electric Power Company to manage the risk. TEPCO officials say they're adding tanks and workers. Stabilizing ropes have been attached to pumps and piping used to inject water into the plant's disabled reactors. Earlier this month, water breached barriers surrounding tanks storing radioactive water. The utility says it now has larger capacity tanks. That's in addition to the standard procedure of moving accumulated water behind barriers into nearby tanks. The company says it has more than 50 workers dedicated to the transfer of water. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant also says radioactive water has overflowed from a tank that stores pumped up groundwater. TEPCO officials say an employee discovered water spilling from the top of the tank Thursday morning. The tank is located on an embankment facing the ocean near the severely damaged reactors number one and two. They say they have stopped drawing up groundwater and that the leakage has been contained within a barrier set up around the tank. The officials say they're looking into how much water is spilled from the tank and why. It says a pump used to send the water from the tank to a storage place in the reactor building may not have been working. TEPCO began pumping up groundwater near the reactors in August to reduce the amount of contaminated water flowing into the sea. The groundwater flowing from the mountains becomes tainted as it passes through the plant's compound. The typhoon also appears to have affected the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The operator says it has detected high levels of radiation in a ditch leading to the sea. The operator suspects that typhoon rains caused contaminated soil to flow into the ditch. 
Workers are conducting daily radiation checks on the water in the ditch in an effort to determine the effects of contaminated water leaks from storage tanks. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say they detected 1,400 becquerels per liter of beta ray emitting radioactive material at a point 150 meters from the sea on Wednesday. The figure was more than 70 times higher than readings taken on Tuesday. It's also the highest since monitoring of the ditch water began in August. TEPCO officials say they will clean up the ditch. They also plan to assess the effects of the incident on the surrounding seawater. People in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have another challenge on their hands. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say the effects of a leak of contaminated water are expanding. They've detected a sharp rise in radioactivity in groundwater in a monitoring well. NHK World's Yuji Osawa reports. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi seem to have a new challenge on their hands every day. More than 300 tons of contaminated water leaked out of a storage tank in August. And they've been dealing with the effects ever since. Some of the water may have flowed out through a ditch and into the Pacific Ocean. Workers dug a well about 10 meters from the tank to monitor the impact. On Thursday, they detected 400,000 becquerels per liter of strontium and other radioactive substances in the well. That's 6,500 times higher than readings taken the day before. They'd already detected high levels of radioactive tritium. It tends to be transferred easily in water. Substances such as strontium are transferred relatively slowly. The people in charge of the plant believe the latest findings show that those materials too have reached the groundwater. Fishermen worry about what the leaks might mean for them. The accident two years ago forced crews up and down the coast to stop working. Starting in June of last year, those in northern Fukushima headed back out onto the water to carry out test catches. And now, fishermen from the port city of Iwaki have headed out for test catches of their own. We are 30% hopeful and 70% worried about the contaminated water. We'll do our best, but we're anxious about what consumers will think. The fishermen have to stay at least 40 kilometers away from the nuclear plant and they can only catch 16 kinds of seafood, including octopus, hairy crab, and the local specialty, round green eyes. Fishing cooperatives test for radioactivity. They've set their own safety limit, twice as strict as the government standard. If a sample does not meet their criteria, all of the species caught that day will be thrown out. But if all goes well, fishermen hope they'll be able to ship their catch to markets around the prefecture. Yuji Osawa, NHK World. Recent heavy rains in Japan are creating more problems for workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Rainwater has accumulated in containment areas around tanks storing radioactive water, and it spilled outside those areas. Some of the spilled water contained unsafe levels of a radioactive substance. NHK World's Masaki Otake reports. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi have been struggling for months with leaks of contaminated water. Now they're dealing with another problem, rain. They saw a heavy downpour last week during a typhoon. And on Sunday, another storm brought more than 100 millimeters of rain. All that water built up inside barriers surrounding tanks that store contaminated water. Workers discovered it had flowed over the barriers at 11 spots. In six areas, they detected levels of radioactive strontium above the government safety limit. The highest reading was more than 70 times the standard. Now the workers are trying to find out whether some of the water flowed through ditches and into the Pacific Ocean. The barriers are designed to contain any tainted water that leaks from the tanks. 
the walls are fitted with drainage pipes. Initially, whenever it rained, workers opened the pipes to discharge rainwater. But in August, they found that 300 tons of highly radioactive water had leaked from one of the tanks. It traveled through a pipe to the area beyond the barrier. Workers decided to shut off all the pipes and pump out any water that collected inside the containment area. They now check the pumped out water for radioactivity to ensure it meets government standards. Heavy rains are making that job a lot harder. Managers plan to install more pumps around the tanks to make sure they can deal with any amount of water. They say they don't want to get caught out the next time a storm hits. Masaki Otake, NHK World. Workers at the plant are trying to prevent more leaks of contaminated water. Forecasters are calling for heavy rain later this week. The workers are adding pumps to keep rainwater tainted with radioactive substances from overflowing. Heavy downpours caused rainwater to overflow Sunday from 11 barriers around tanks holding radioactive wastewater. Water in six of the barriers contained radioactive strontium that exceeded the government-approved limit. The highest reading was more than 70 times the maximum permitted level. TEPCO officials said the pumps were unable to keep up as the rains poured down. Workers will add 19 more pumps, and they plan to use larger draining hoses. That will make it possible to transfer water more quickly. A TEPCO spokesperson says the company may add more workers if necessary. Workers monitoring the spread of toxic water around Fukushima are going to ramp up efforts. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say they'll check offshore radiation levels around the clock. TEPCO officials on Monday had a panel meeting with Nuclear Regulation Authority personnel. They're studying the impact of radioactive water leaks. Plant workers currently check coastal waters once a day, but experts have called for 24-hour monitoring to allow for better information and faster responses. TEPCO officials said they'll give more details at a meeting next month. And nuclear regulators propose increasing the distance they're monitoring from 300 kilometers to up to 3,000 kilometers. One panel member said the agency will ask ships to collect data to share with Pacific Rim countries. Engineers at Japan's damaged nuclear plant are testing a technique that could slow the leak of radioactive water into the environment. They've come up with a way to freeze contaminated water on site to stop it from seeping into underground tunnels and then into the sea. Plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company allowed an NHK crew to visit a test site near Tokyo. The facility simulates an underground tunnel at Fukushima Daiichi. The water inside is assumed to be radioactive. Some of it has been frozen. The engineers have watched contaminated water build up every day at the plant. Groundwater flows into turbine buildings and becomes radioactive. Water used to cool melted fuel also becomes contaminated. Tainted water from both sources makes its way into underground tunnels connected to the turbine buildings. TEPCO officials say the tunnel water is the main source of radioactive materials that are getting into the sea. Here's a look at what engineers did. They inserted pipes into the mock tunnel along with a clay-based packer. They injected a liquid coolant into the pipes to freeze the packer and surrounding water. The idea is the ice would serve as a wall to stop more water from getting into the tunnels. Crews would then pump out the contaminated water that remains. The engineers began the experiment in August. They say they created a two-meter square ice wall in about six weeks. The ice wall is preventing water from flowing in here, so the test shows it's possible to block the flow. But the real tunnels at Fukushima Daiichi have pipes and other obstacles, so the engineers conducted a test taking that into account. They say they were able to create an ice wall by installing extra pipes. But they still face a challenge. Radiation levels in the real tunnels are so high, workers can't enter. They would have to rely on engineering plans to guide them as they install the pipes from above ground. We have to fully understand the structure inside the tunnels by referring to the engineering drawings. TEPCO officials plan to begin the work early next year. 
A few months later, they hope to start removing the roughly 10,000 tons of radioactive water that has accumulated in the tunnels. A powerful storm is sending workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant into a race against time. They need to make space to collect rainwater tainted with radiation. The storage they have is already full from recent heavy rains. A typhoon hit the compound last week, and forecasters say another could hit Japan's Pacific coast this weekend. Regulators have given their approval to move the rainwater to three underground pools. The pools can store up to 9,000 tons of water. Brokers with Tokyo Electric Power Company discovered earlier this year that some pools of the same kind had developed leaks. Since then, they've been pumping contaminated rainwater into hundreds of tanks above ground and into the basement of a turbine building. But managers say those places are almost full. They say they have no choice but to use the underground pools. And workers have another challenge on their hands. They found highly radioactive water on Wednesday in a ditch on the compound. They say they'll transfer the water to one of the storage tanks. An approaching storm is sending workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant into a race against time. They need to make space to collect rainwater tainted with radiation. The storage they have is almost full. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi has more. Workers at the plant have had their hands full dealing with rainwater. A typhoon blew by last week. That was followed by a heavy rainstorm. Forecasters say Another storm could hit this weekend. The rain has filled barriers around storage tanks for contaminated water. On Sunday, workers discovered that the rainwater had flowed over the barriers at several locations. Tests revealed that some of that water contained unsafe levels of radioactive strontium. There have been other problems. Earlier this month, workers mistakenly allowed 430 liters of highly contaminated water to escape outside the barriers. Some of it may have reached the ocean. On another occasion, workers pumped too much radioactive water into a small tank. Five tons overflowed. The possibility of more rain has the plant's operators scrambling for a solution. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company have asked nuclear regulators to let them store water in underground pools. We've asked to be allowed to use the underground pools. We won't put highly tainted water into them. Managers plan to temporarily store rainwater in underground pools. They can hold nearly 9,000 tons of water. The pools consist of holes dug into the earth. They are lined with three waterproof sheets. In April, three of seven pools leaked. TEPCO stopped using all of them, but they've decided to fill pools that have not leaked before. With more rain on the way, company officials say they have no other choice. Regulators have given them the go-ahead. Chie Yamagishi, NHK World. Nuclear regulators in Japan have simplified things for the people in charge of Fukushima Daiichi. They've allowed workers at the nuclear plant to change the way they release water from barriers around storage tanks. The tanks hold radioactive water. They're surrounded by barriers and rainwater builds up inside. Up until now, workers had to move the water into other tanks. They had to test it to make sure it was safe. Then they could release it into the compound. But in the last few weeks, they've seen a number of storms, and they have not been able to keep up. Water with unsafe levels of contamination has overflowed the barriers. So officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company asked if they could stop transferring the rainwater into other tanks. They want to test the water inside the barriers, then, if it's safe, release it. The regulators approved.
Pepco managers say they'll adopt the new procedures until the end of this year. They plan to add more pumps to transfer the rainwater, and they want to build higher barriers around the tanks. The head of the utility in charge of Japan's damaged nuclear plant has faced some tough questions. Tokyo Electric Power Company President Naomi Hirose had a rare meeting with the chairman of the Nuclear Regulation Authority, Shunichi Tanaka. Tanaka asked Hirose how TEPCO managers plan to prevent more problems at Fukushima Daiichi following a series of radioactive water leaks. The president said he intends to send more workers to the crippled facility, including those now at another idle nuclear plant. He also said TEPCO plans to support the workers to ensure they can make full use of their skills. Tanaka asked Hirose to improve working conditions inside the Fukushima plant, including for those who are dealing with the decontamination process. He reportedly said he wants the utility to carry out drastic long-term reforms. Tokyo Electric Power Company is expected to post about $1.1 billion in profits for the April to September period. It will be the company's first midterm profit since the Fukushima nuclear crisis began in 2011. TEPCO officials hiked household rates last September. Profits rose as electricity sales surged during this summer's record heat wave. The officials also made spending cuts that included putting off repair work at other power plants and transmission facilities. TEPCO aims to post a profit for the full business year that ends March of 2014. But the officials will continue to face massive compensation costs related to the nuclear accident. They'll also need to decommission the damaged reactors and process contaminated wastewater at the Fukushima plant. They now want to restart two reactors at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa complex in Niigata prefecture to boost earnings. But regulators have yet to start safety screening procedures. Managers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have tried again and again to contain the spread of contaminated water. They've come up with a new approach they hope will bring them success. They're going to pump up underground water around a storage tank. More than 300 tons of contaminated water leaked out of the tank in August. Workers dug wells so they could monitor the scale of the leak. On Monday, they checked a well 10 meters from the tank. They detected 220,000 backrolls per liter of radioactive substances in the water. Now, they're going to dig five more wells. And they plan to start pumping up underground water over the next few weeks. They hope to collect and store about 10 tons per day. The workers are also busy removing highly radioactive soil from around the tank. And they plan to start digging over a wider area. And the crews at the plant are about to begin another operation that carried with it some risks. Nuclear regulators have approved a plan for them to remove spent fuel rods from one of the reactor buildings. More than 1,300 units of spent fuel rods are being stored in a pool inside the building, along with about 200 that haven't been used. Engineers want to start removing them in about a week. Explosions rocked the building during the accident two years ago, so the engineers need to check if any debris damaged the rods. Then they'll use a crane to remove them one by one. They want to make sure they don't get caught up in the wreckage. Managers say they hope to finish the work by the end of 2014.